So my two, two, two of my uh, most time-consuming and also um, resource-consuming, by which I mean money, <laughs> uh, hobbies are bagpipes and 3D printing. And I'm definitely not the only person uh, who exists with an internet connection, at least because that's how I know of it, uh, who has this intersection of hobbies of uh, 3D printing and bagpipe making. Now, um, a lot of the 3D printed stuff I do is like miniatures for tabletop games. And I'd, I'd like to think that I've pretty well figured out some, I mean, like, I've printed, I'm not an industrial printer, it is a hobby, but, like, I estimate that I've printed through probably between 35 and 40 uh, standard reels of filament, mostly ABS, some PLA and stuff like that. So, like, anybody who does printing knows that, like, that's, that's not a teensy amount of printing. Like, I've been doing it for a few years now, and I'd, I'd like to think that I've figured out some, some good tricks for, like, you know, how to really calibrate my printer well for, for nice detail stuff. Sometimes that comes into play with bagpiping stuff. Here's a practice chanter that I'm rather happy with, um, at, with this Cthulhu head at the bottom there. Um, but what I've never been able to achieve is, like, structural strength. Um, so, like, this is has nice detail on it, but it's... Uh, I gotta be really careful with it. Um, this is a whole box right here. Of, this is one of my many boxes of like failed printing projects. Pretty much all bagpipe stuff in here. Um, well, I guess like here's the top half of a whistle that broke. So that's not exactly bagpiping, but lots of practice chanter stuff. And like this is the main problem with this stuff, right? It's functional, but. It's, it's not very strong, right? Uh, Full-on uh, bagpipe chanter, you know? Functional as long as you're really, really careful with it. But again, like, not, not super strong, right? The tensile strength isn't really there. Um, I've tried a few different things to kind of like reinforce it. You can make thicker pieces. That's a stock right there, a drone stock. Um, oh yeah, for a while, for a while I was trying to have a friend who does uh, dipping. So I was trying, after I'd print them, I'd dip, I had, I'd have this friend of mine dip them, and I thought maybe that would give a little strength to it. It didn't really. Oh yeah, here's another good example. So we dipped it. It looks cool, but it doesn't get much stronger. Um, so, oh yeah, I've tried, I've tried some stuff where I, I change filament colors throughout. Again, that looks cool, but it still doesn't solve the strength problem. I think part of it is that I, 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 I have a hard time printing at 100% uh, fill. Anyway, uh, that's, let me get to the crux of why I'm making this video. Um, like this, I wanted to show some other examples. Lindsay System Chanter, the print and play. It's something a lot of us uh, bagpiper, 3D printer hobbyists like to do. I've tried and tried at small pipes. These are two different small pipe common stocks that I've printed in this. Of course, the, the stocks themselves come out pretty strong because they're so darn big. But then you get to the drones and like, look how skinny these are, you know? And I don't know if you can quite see on the camera, but like my print quality there was not perfect. You see that? I needed to work on the retraction rate or something there to not get such a, such a hairy finish on there. Um, and, you know, I tried with different different materials. Like I say, mostly ABS is what I ended up liking, but uh, PLA sometimes too. I've done a few different iterations of, of like, practice chanters. You can see the, the really big difference, like, going for, like, what's the, what's the optimum, you know, like, thickness for strength, but also comfort, you know? Um, anyway, what I'm trying to get at is I just got a set of drones from Dave over at 3D Printed, or D uh, Delta Bagpipes, the 3D Printed Bagpipes guy, and... I didn't think they would be bad, but I was unprepared for how good they would be based on my own experience printing bagpipe stuff. Um, here is a really good comparison. So this is a drone stock. I hope you can see it well enough for this to be a good comparison. This is a drone stock that I printed a few years ago. Functional, reasonably airtight, but this is Dave's. And I don't know, can you, can you see? So there is a seam, of course. There's always going to be a seam. There has to be one, right? Because that's how it prints. But... Can you see the difference in the finish quality between these? Just looking at them, just the way they look. You see how much nicer his looks? I was not prepared for how nice it was going to look. And this is like, I've sanded this down and gave it a, an, an acetone bath and stuff, like trying to get it smoothed out. This is lovely. But also, the strength of it, like you can feel the quality. When you, when you pick these up, that's one thing I can't translate in the video. But like the heft of them, like you can feel quality here. You know, this feels brittle. And uh, I don't, like I say, I have, I, I'm, I'm not a professional 3D printer, but I'm also like, 
I'm an enthusiastic hobbyist, so I don't think that this is just down to my ignorance, you know. Um, this is good. This is really good. Uh, so this, this is the rest of the drone that I printed myself. I was going for this black and gold thing just for fun. And um, yeah, throughout, you see that finish right there? Let me, let me get the, let's see. Still got all his stuff in plastic wrap here. Um, here we go. Drone toppers for comparison. And now the colors aren't exactly the same, but can you see the difference? Like, like look how grainy this is compared to how polished his is. It looks so good. And again, like, I'm not worried about, I'll, I'll whack this on the table all day. This one, <laughs> pretty sure it would snap with a couple good hits, you know? And, and like, to be fair, this stuff probably will break more easily than, than really dense African blackwood, you know? Um, but not... It's not like saying that it will break more easily than dense wood is not the same as saying it will break easily, right? Um, like, this is pretty darn solid. I mean, it's thick. I think he's got to have 100% infill on this because, like, it just feels so good. You can feel how hefty and strong it is. That said, it's also got the benefit of not being as heavy as really dense hardwood. And so, you know, a full set of pipes is going to be a lot lighter on the shoulder. Anyway, that's so this is just to say that, like, I can't wait to hemp this together and see how it sounds, but so far, I am just giddy with excitement about how nice this is. This is nice, nice stuff. Um, there are three main reasons that I am psyched about what Dave is doing with, uh, with his Delta Bagpipes project. The, the first one is accessibility. I, I help teach with my band's free class, you know, and like we've had plenty of students who are very passionate about bagpipes and want to play bagpipes, but that cost barrier is there. So that's one reason, just breaking down barriers to get more people on pipes. S related is the fact that I have a plethora of small children, all of whom I hope will someday play bagpipes. And so, <laughs> you know, how many sets of bagpipes will I be buying in the next 10 years? <laughs> Having a, a more cost-effective option is very, very attractive to me. And then the third reason is just fun, you know? Like this set is is looks very standard. Like if I was standing in a in a in a circle, you know, like you probably wouldn't notice anything different. But like imagine all the color combinations and and stuff like that. He's got some customers. He's got photos of pipes that they've had done that are like um, sometimes really wacky colors, but very cool looking. You know, like um, I, he did a white and gold set where like the wood was white and the mounts were gold. That looked amazing. Um, uh, dark blue, like navy blue with shiny met metallic gold mounts on it. Um, Blue and orange, of course, with the orange and the blue. Anyway, just, uh, I, I'll, I'll make another video once I get them all hemped up and, and can play them to get the sound out of them. But uh, just like holding them and looking at them so far, I'm psyched. Uh, these are great. And to be clear, uh, Dave is not paying me to say that. I do consider him a friend. I think he's a very good friend. But, um, and so like, I would be nice about him anyway. But like, if I thought his stuff was junk, I wouldn't make a negative video about it. Uh, but I wouldn't say anything, you know? <laughs> and so... I'm only doing this because, like, seriously, this is, uh, uh, from, from the perspective of an unqualified uh, hobbyist 3D printing bagpiper, this is impressive. That's all I'm trying to say with this video.